So according to John Deaton, there's a couple of things that we should be paying attention to in the Ripple versus the SEC case. Number one, I'm going to tell you what his speculation is in terms of when this case could end, if it's going to end in summary judgment, if it's going to end in settlement, and the other thing that we should be keeping an eye on that is going to end well before the Ripple case, that could have far-reaching implications for the rest of the cryptocurrency world. And as I'm making this video, a Bitcoin has surged up to $24,000 this morning. I'm going to tell you what some of the levels are that it just that it just used as support that is very important to the overall price and what it's up against in the next day or two. Also, Fortune Magazine has named Ripple one of the better places to work for a medium-sized company. I'm going to tell you where they came in in terms of the top 100 companies best places to work. Also, the United States Treasury has added yet another cryptocurrency tool to their list of sanctioned things that United States citizens cannot interact with. I'm going to tell you what this one is and why it's so controversial. Hey everyone, my name is Randy and welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And right now on this channel, we are covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, as well as other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join the Late Night Grind community. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon, that way YouTube will send you a notification when I release a new video. And also, if you do a couple of things, I'd appreciate it. Smash the thumbs up button, watch this video all the way to the end. And of course, check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. If you do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, let's jump into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is Ripple, because as of right now, they're continuing to grow and continuing to do well, despite the fact that they are in a case with the SEC. Now, as a lot of people have been following this case for a while, they don't see this as any big deal. It's just business as usual for Ripple, especially outside of the United States. Well, Fortune Magazine has just named them one of the top 100 companies to work for, top 100 medium-sized companies to work for. As of right now, Ripple has about 575 employees, which puts them in that bracket. And as of today, they fall in at number 34 in terms of the best 100 companies to work for. They actually dropped the spot from last year. They were one spot ahead of that. So not sure what that means, probably not a whole lot. But nonetheless, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, said it's great to see uh, that those kind of numbers come out. It's great to see that you have some kind of confirmation uh, that what you're doing as a company uh, and as a whole has kind of proliferated out the rest of the, throughout the rest of the company and that your employees are in fact happy to work there. And upon hearing that news, I saw some tweets that were actually tweeted out by Ripple that said, Hey, we're number 34 on the best 100 places to work. Come come work for Ripple. We're hiring. And they are not kidding. There's actually several offices that they're opening up in several different countries that they're going to be hiring literally hundreds of more employees. All right, so now I want to talk about what the market is doing right now. Now, this week, there is uh, going to be some very big news coming out. We have the CPI numbers coming out. We have some of the housing market data that's going to be coming out later in the week and early into next week. And of course, last week, we had huge news in the crypto world uh, with the news that broke that that Coinbase and BlackRock are going into a partnership. And of course, BlackRock, the biggest asset manager in the entire world. Well, there's uh, well, there's rampant speculation as to what they're going to be doing with Coinbase, how much of that assets they're going to actually going to be converting to Bitcoin for their extremely wealthy institutional clients, some of which are governments. So with all of that surrounding the price of Bitcoin, on Monday morning, it jumped to about 24000 uh, It ramped up about seven to $800 in, in very short order. And not only that, it actually did something that a lot of people were hoping it would do. And that was, it bounced off of a number, which was 22800 Why is it an important number? Why? Because that was the 200-week moving average that Bitcoin has typically seen as a support level since uh, literally for the for the past 10 years. Um, it has dipped below that, obviously, for the past month, but it recently climbed above it. And as it dipped back down to 22,800, it bounced off of it and now ro and rocketed back up to 24,000. So some important numbers to watch uh, because right now it looks like there is a very strong trend line, uh, a channel trend line that it's been uh, trading at for the past month or so. The next time it's going to hit against this trend line, it looks like it's probably going to be about 25,100 to 25,200, depending on when it gets there. It's a very strong resistance point. There is a large likelihood that it will get rejected and that the price will continue moving down. And if it does, then we're going to have to take a look at some of the macro news that's been coming out because that could, of course, send Bitcoin lower for the next month or so. However, if it breaks out of that, there's some big numbers that we could be looking at. 
Because right now, if it breaks through that trend line of 25,200, it goes up to 20, it goes up to 25,400. That's the next one you want to look at. If it breaks through and it has to have a breakthrough with conviction, then you're probably looking at a straight shot up to 28,000, maybe even 30,000, depending on what the news is for that particular week. Uh, so those are the numbers that you're going to want to look for. And right now, XRP trading at about 38 cents. If Bitcoin goes up to that 25,000 number, probably looking at about 41 to 42 cents, potentially for XRP and a breakout to 44 cents. And that would mean some big news because I would be keeping very close attention to XRP if it gets to that 44 cent level. All right, then before we get into what John Deaton's saying about this case versus Ripple and when it could potentially end, I wanna talk about what the United States Treasury just did because they've put something else on a sanctioned list if you are in the United States. So there is a, a cryptocurrency tool, it's called a mixing tool. Basically, what you do is you can send your cryptocurrency to these, to these, uh, to these wallet addresses which have smart contracts which basically then do something called a mixing. And, and I'm not gonna get into any of the technical factors, but basically what it does is take your cryptocurrency, mixes it up and spits it back out to you so that it can't be tracked from previous transactions to any new transactions you would do in the future. Now, a lot of what people are thinking, including probably what you're thinking right now is, well, isn't that good for hiding transactions and doing money laundering? Well, yeah, that's exactly what it's been used for and that's exactly what the US Treasury Department said that it is now on their sanction list because of. And in their statement, they actually cited several different money laundering, uh, several different money laundering operations that have used this service in the past. Uh, upwards of several hundred million dollars was what it was uh, eventually tracked back to in terms of uh, in terms of illegal money laundering schemes that had used this service. So of course, it says if you're a United States citizen, you can no longer use this service. Again, this service was called Tornado Cash. And some people say, well, yeah, this is a good thing. You shouldn't have to use things like this. Cryptocurrency was made to be transparent. You should see every transaction. So you shouldn't be able to hide anything. And of course, privacy advocates say the complete opposite and say, well, no, listen, if this is a sovereign asset, a sovereign form of currency, then I should have the right to privacy and nobody should have a right to see what I'm doing with my money. And of course, they're right as well. So it's one of those ongoing debates that's gonna be continuing to be an ongoing debate. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of Tornado Cash or other mixing services being banned. Are they being banned for the right reasons or are they being, or is it just another tool, another privacy tool being taken away from sovereign citizens? All right, so now let's talk about what John Deaton recently said on an interview with Tony from Thinking Crypto. And they were talking about this Ripple versus the SEC case, of course. And John was making note of when he thinks this case could potentially end. And unfortunately, it doesn't line up with some of the others that say November, December of this year. Uh, John is a little more bearish in terms of the length of time that it's gonna take for this case to end. He said, summary judgment is likely going to happen. He doesn't see settlement happening. Now that could all change, of course, he had to hedge his bets, but in his, um, but in his mind, this is going all the way to summary judgment. And he said, the earliest you're probably looking at is March of 2023. And he said, even then it could go into April or possibly even May of 2023. So if you're looking for the clarity, if you're looking for this win with Ripple, you might not be, it's probably not going to be happening this year. That's not a bad thing in my opinion, and I'll save that discussion for another video. But he said, right now, there aren't gonna be any settlement talks. And in fact, the rest of the crypto community should be focused on something else right now. And that's not the Ripple versus the SEC case. It's the library case versus the SEC. In approximately six weeks, this case is supposed to end in summary judgment as, as both sides, both the SEC and the library, have filed their summary judgment briefs. And in this case, this is what John Deaton has been saying for well over a year, and uh, two years now, in terms of what the SEC is doing in their, in their overreach, their unlawful expansion of the Howey test, and how they're basically saying that, you know what, it doesn't even matter if, crypto, if cryptocurrencies have utility. It doesn't, literally nothing matters other than the potential for a potential profit based on the potential efforts of others. And by others, they're basically arguing that almost anybody can be others, including the group of people that are actually buying it. So if you think that's crazy, well, you're not crazy. You do want to follow this case, this library versus the SEC case. So John Deaton, it's not looking very good if you want a quick end to this case. It doesn't look like it's going to be happening in 2022. But like he said, all of that could change depending on what's going on politically. We have midterms coming up. Gary Gensler may or may not resign. There's speculation that if Republicans take back the House of Representatives, 
representatives, which looks like a pretty sure thing at this point. Gary's days are numbered. But let me know in the comment section down below what you think. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end, for smashing that thumbs up button, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.